Hey, 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 happy Monday. I'm live. Let me just make sure everything is up and moving. And we can get started. All right, so we are live. Everything is definitely, looks like I'm clear, you know, with technology, you just never know. All right, so we look like we're good. All right, so welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Lauren Elsie Thriva, I'm the thriving entrepreneur, and I'm here to welcome you to Thrive Abundantly TV. Today is Monday, June 19th. Happy belated Father's Day um, for those who celebrated uh, with their husbands their children's father, or whatever the case may be. I know this channel is catered to our women, but we always have to respect and represent our kings. So um, I just wanted to, you know, touch on that. I hope everybody had an amazing weekend. I got a lot, a lot of goodies for you guys this week. So I want to really um, kind of go on the topic to speak more on you know, business and money, like really setting up and getting a good understanding um, of, of your business, the right things to do, what you should be setting up, what you should be looking at, understanding the difference of, um, you know, your LLC and S Corp, things like that. I've done a lot of research, um, a lot of things I had to learn uh, and made some mistakes and learn from doing uh, my other business. Now, of course, I'm speaking in a sense from New York because um, this is where I'm at. Um, but uh, a lot of things I can just share, you know, just the list because I know I wish I had this kind of information. So like I said, while I come, um, I work with women entrepreneurs to basically help them to get from point A to point B, you know, all the way to point Z in their business and their life. So, you know, I, I push and move women to take leaps and bounds in their business to, you know, to um, learn to branch their business online to create the income that they desire without burnout or sacrificing time with their family. And here on Thrive Abundant TV, I am here for, you know, entrepreneurs to just make you go, hmm, and think about your business a little bit more, think about your life a lot more, and really gut check you into that. You need someone to kind of shake you, get you to the point, I wish I had something like this in this kind of platform. So I'm here you know, we've talked about a lot of amazing things. Um, Thrive Abundantly TV started the first week of May, I believe. So we've been moving and recording. Um, we have a lot of great episodes that have been on. I think I'm around 20 something um, episodes. So is that about 20? About, yeah, I think I've reached like 21 episodes. So I'm excited about that. Um, and, you know, I'm always here to, you know, speak. I'm always here to answer any questions. And I have been getting people asking me um, particular questions about, you know, the proper way of setting up their business, per se. So, um, uh oh, my bad. So I wanted to um, touch on that because, you know, a lot of people who are at the leap of you know, going for their business, not knowing what type of, um, you know, entity they should go for or kind of getting a, a just understanding about taxes and, and a lot of information like that. So I'm here to share a lot on that. A lot of things that I personally learned. Um, I'm not a tax professional. I'm not a, an accounting or tax advisor. But guess what? I'm going to have a special guest for you guys on Thursday. Um, it's going to be a different time. I will be sharing um, the time and, and posting more about that. It'll be about 30 minutes behind just because there are time difference with our special guests and I'm traveling that day. So I'm going to make sure that I do have her on so she can give her professional advice and um, particular things. So definitely come on. 
send me your messages or any questions that you may have. And I'll make sure that we are live in on, on Thursday about that. But I wanted to, you know, get you guys to get a just understanding about, you know, your business and what you are liable for. First, um, people need to understand, differentiate and really set your business up to a place from having a side hustle to an actual business. And the way to do that is all about your record, your record keeping, the things that you have set in place, um, you know, um, actually getting, you know, a EIN number. Those are really important. And especially those who have um, like a network marketing business, you know, this is a platform. It's kind of like a, a online franchise, right? So, you know, you have a place where if you're in a network marketing business, circle your business, your life around that business. This is going to help you be in a better place to avoid, you know, um, getting audit and things like that. So I wanted to touch on, you know, just the gist about that. And later in the week, um, you know, between tomorrow and Wednesday, I'm going to share a lot more of the difference between LLC and S Corp. But I wanted to make sure that, you know, you're setting your business for success. So that's what today is about, setting your business for success. So it's really important that, you know, if especially, like I said, for those who have a network marketing business, to get yourself an EIN number, set your business platform that it has. So let's say, you know, you have a, a, um, you're selling like a health product company, right? Fees, weight loss shakes, you know, all the all those good things, right? You want to make sure that you you have a, like a health a, a health consulting business. Or, you know, uh, um, like some form of a consultant business that you circle around. A lot of times people mix their business with their business. I know people who, um, you know, put their uh, business under their own business. And like, say, if they have a network marketing business like I did um, or whatever, I put it under my business. So it was like an additional service. So the thing is. Um, it's really important to set yourself in that place. So the things that you could do, you can go online um, to get an EIN. You can even go in a bank. Um, that's where I got mine. Um, I went into a bank where my bank, they set me up my EIN. Um, one, and then I had another EIN made by uh, one of my financial advisors. He set it up for me. So EIN is free. And um, for what I know, we're right here in New York, um, different states, but for the most part, it's free. You can go into, you know, your bank or go as far as Google and say set up my EIN in your state, you know, your city and state. So it's really important that you set up an EIN. And then that way you have a, um, a EIN where you're kind of identifying yourself personally away from, you know, it's like it's just a tax code number. And I'll have um, our special guest Vaughn to share a lot more about that and particular questions. So if you have questions on based on what I'm giving and sharing with you guys throughout the day, then you get a good understanding. OK, so it's really important that, you know, you set yourself up to a platform. Then it's really important that you have a base where you're doing proper record keeping. OK, record keeping is really important where you know you are able to uh keep on track on what you're um recording you know or like you know your receipts your payments and things like that i wanted to share i have it on my ipad i have an ebook version but um if you look up sandy bockins b-o-t-k-i-n-s is a guy he's a tax attorney and he's really really good um he worked for the irs follow him he gives a lot of great insight he has a book called um, Lower Your Taxes Big Time. This is really important. Like I understand for those who are, you know, business owners, you kind of just automatically throw those things on your, um, you, you automatically throw those things on your, you know, your CPA or accountant or, you know, well, same thing. your tax person, you don't want to take responsibility, but guess what? Your tax person is not there with you every bit of the way. So it's really important that you at least have the base understanding of what it is that you do um, when you're keeping your records. That way is, like I said, it don't have to be crystal clear, super, super clean. But the more on, on point that you are, the less you have to have your CPA, the person who's doing your taxes, funnel through your things and less errors. OK, so my tax lady is amazing. Her name is Candace Woodruff and she's out in Arkansas. So. My tax lady, she always commends me as far as with my tax records, right? So she always share um, that I make her job so much easier because a lot of times, you know, if 
the thing is, is this what she was saying that she really wished that a lot of um, tax people put themselves, I mean, people who are business owners kind of, the thing is you want to kind of get, you know, just the, the gist of organizing everything and then they can kind of fill in the gaps for you. So with me, she just had to change around just a few things. Maybe I didn't put, you know, the proper thing or, or that way it ties into my business. The thing is you want to circle your business around your life, right? This is how your lifestyle can be for most of your lifestyle can be a tax write-off, correct? So it's really important that, you know, you have a, a just understanding of these particular things because um, when you do, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to find something, something for you guys that can keep the, the proper note. Um, but what you do is really important that you do that because when you have everything and all your ducks in a row, that leaves less for your um, your tax person to you know keep up to date with everything that's going on. So, because they're they're not with you all the time, they don't know every little thing that you do. You get what I'm saying? So, my tax person told me to record everything, write as much notes as possible in my record keeping. So then that way, when she's going through everything and looking up, and you know, do it, she could just kind of cover the just things that I need to, you know, take care of. So it's really important for you as a business owner. I see this happen all the time. I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners. They always, oh, my tax person takes care of that. Oh, you know, and it's really, it's really important that you have the just understanding. You under, you need to have a good understanding of what you are liable for, what you are eligible for. And like I said, we'll have our special guest on this Thursday to kind of share some, you know, more information about that. I'm super excited about that. But, um, you know, I want you guys to first know, like once for those who already have like a business set up. So like I said, if you have, you know, a network marketing um, business, like I said, this is kind of like a, a business already done for you. Like it's kind of like you're getting like a franchise online kind of business. It's really, really, really important to just put yourself to be audit proof and, you know, make sure that you have things clean. A lot of people get so scared with, you know, getting an audit. The thing is with an audit, it's just they want to make sure that your business is not a hobby. A lot of you guys are running your business as a hobby. And I want to say that. So it's really important that you, you know, you set your business up as a business. So if you have, you know, a network marketing business, it's really important that you go and get an EIN. As I said, I went to a bank and got my EIN. My um, financial um, advisor had got my EIN for me. But you can get it online or whatever the case may be, you know, where you're sitting in state, just Google. Like, you know, what I mean, Google could be your best friend. So um, it's, it's really important with, with that, because when you set up your business in a place that, you know, in the event that, you know, you, God forbid you get audit. The first thing that you want to the thing is, and this is what my tax person tell me, you want to make sure that you have your yourself in a place where they have no room to even think as a hobby or think you just kind of picked up this business just to get the tax advantages because there are a lot of people who are. So, as I said, for those who have a business, if you don't have an EIN, get an EIN. Um, for those who do have your own particular business, like, you know, like I said, I'm speaking for those who have like network marketing, but if those who have their own business, you want to set yourself up that you have an LLC um, or an S Corp. And I'll share tomorrow a little bit more about those two. Uh, I'm just giving you guys just a, you know, a breast, um, briefing of everything. But, you know, an LLC is an entity, an S Corp is an entity. Um, you know, a lot of businesses, especially if you're just starting out and you're really trying to see where this side hustle gets you. The, um, uh, DBA, doing business as is really important. I wish that I went on to do the DBA first because here in New York, um, I think it's one other state, but here in New York, right, when you get an LLC, right, or S Corp, you have to have a publishing certificate. So that means that you have to have an ad, two separate ads running for a consecutive six weeks in um, a newspaper article. Um, so, you know, there's ones that you can particularly find for free. But at the first time when I ran my first business four years ago, I didn't know that. And I really wish that I set myself up to do a DBA because a publishing can be very expensive. So it's just a lot liable um, with a doing business as and I'll have our guests kind of give a lot more, um, for, you know, um, def, uh, explanation more on this. Uh, but, you know, with a doing business as you are liable of a lot of things versus if you get an LLC, which is limited liability, uh, liability, 
you, you're you're not as liable to certain things. So both of my businesses are LLC. And I just wish at the start, you know, when you're kind of just seeing where this business goes and things like that, I wish I had kind of carried it on to do a DBA first because there's a lot of um, tax fees and um, publishing fees, like I said, that I didn't know about um, that was really important. So that's um, one particular thing that I want to make sure uh, we got a question. So besides a trademark for my brand, should I go for LLC? So a trademark. Um, to my understanding, you know what? I'm going to write that question down just to make sure for our guests. Um, for our guests that she kind of answers that. So tune in on Thursday. Uh, tune in on Thursday so she can kind of give you a, a good just an understanding from a professional. But from my understanding, a trademark is just you putting yourself in a place of owning that that brand, that label. So like, you know, say if you have a catchy phrase or whatever like you know with me um if i want to you know do a trademark for my brand right for like thrive abundantly right so no one can't use it or you know um thrive on or you know whatever the case may be like you want to trademark a trademark is just you owning that so if anyone um if anyone um geez my brain just went left um so if anyone this is right but if anyone um uses your brand name like it and they're marketing it you can sue them right but as far as an entity um let me make sure so besides, besides oh should i go for a llc sorry i misunderstand your question but i just wanted to for anybody else who's viewing a trademark is just owning that so if, yes you it really depends on where you are there's a lot of people who go on and um you know get their their business entity set up and then they go ahead and you know get their trademark eventually because a lot of this stuff depending on what it is you know it's not as needed you know or whatever the case may be so um you know you can do a dba or things like that if you have the a full gist of the entity of your business per se and then later get the trademark because i know trademarks can be you know expensive on the, on the fact so it really depends um i personally am one of getting your brand your business and everything out there as quick as possible you know really the things and i'm going to talk about that i don't want to share too much of my notes but one of the um one of the really good things that you should focus on a lot of people worry so much on the logistics of things as far as like business cards the brand um, the trademark um you know um uh, paying for you know logos and labels and all these things and then they got this pretty packaged product and it's protected and patent and all that thing but then they haven't they don't even have any money for marketing and branding that's where you really should be really focusing on is getting your brand out there so you know a lot of entrepreneurs when we're just starting up we don't have a lot of money all the time so you know you really want to make sure that you put your ducks in a row in the right in the right, you know, direction. But um, because I've been one of those entrepreneurs that focus so much with looking, because we look at bigger brands, right? And we have to remember starting out at the beginning, we're not a big brand. So a lot of times we put ourselves out getting all this stuff and 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 business cards and all these things. And like I said, we got this perfect package business, but then we have no marketing. We can't afford, a, you know, a coach. Or things like that so i chose with my brand to move things a little differently and i started seeing results a lot faster because i focused on the things that's going to get you want to focus on income producing activities period so don't waste your time you know doing a lot of things if you need to delegate it you know what i mean start really looking at what's going to bring me money what's going to put myself out there a lot of times people are even testing to see if this is a product and brand i have a brother who owns many brands and products and he don't even have the platform in place he just puts the things out there because the thing is you want to see how the how your audience attracts to things so that's why with certain companies they put their surveys and things out there first before you even know what the brand and the product is because you want to see it's not about what we think and what we envision and see what our product is it's really about seeing how the audience attract to it then you can start tweaking and molding so that's where i've, I've done the difference with my business per se is I put my brand out there, put the money into the, you know, the coaching, um, you know, the gar the the guidance, the, um, you know, as far as setting up the platform, I had to delegate a lot of things because it was taking up a lot of time for getting a lot of things and webinars and stuff like that out there. Yes, yeah, supply and demand. You want to make sure what's at the demand. You know, if you're just having all this pretty stuff, 
I mean, I know tons of people. I've been in that place with other businesses per se. And I spent all this money on all the pretty stuff, products, brands, and everything. And then I didn't have a, 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 a you know, a feed. You want to have people coming through the door. You know what I'm saying? It's the same thing when people spend so much time if, as far as the storefront. They get everything out, but then they never put the word out there. And then you got the door open and you got crickets. You know what I'm saying? So it's really important to know that difference and setting yourself up in the right place. Okay. So, um, me, I would say, you know, speak to someone and you could share it, save that question for our special guest. But from my experience and what I know, it really depends. But a lot of times people don't even know where your brand or anything to trademark unless you know it's a super catchy thing and no one's trademarked it. OK, so. Um, all right. Let's say like, you know, everybody's saying, you know, um, I don't know. Give me a catchy, like, you know, if you have like a catchy thing that's in a song, right? My hair. If you have a catchy thing that's in a song and then you find out it's not even trademarked, I would probably, because everybody's saying it, you know what I'm saying? Like if everybody is particularly saying it and then you want to start creating t-shirts and stuff like that. I would research to see if that's, if, if you know, it's like everybody's saying it. And then you, because you might catch some people slipping. You might have someone who I've seen it before where you have someone who made a song, everybody's saying this, this term, and then you go and research because you're business minded and you're doing everything behind the scenes and you see who, um, who particularly, you know, are, are saying that, that, that name, you know, or whatever the case may be. And if it's not trademark, but then you see everybody going around, even making shirts, but you go and trademark it, then you can go against those those people who are doing it and either stop them or and give a lawsuit for doing that. So, um, you know, it's just it just depends, like especially if it's a common thing. But I personally am worrying about getting your name, your brand, everything out there and then, you know, trademark it, you know, because I know a lot of business and some people may say this is backwards. It really depends. You got I feel like there's a, a, um, a right cushion space for that. But there's been people who put their bread out there and then a trademark and someone had it. So then they had to go back and create, you know, change their business. So, um, you know, I hope that was helpful. Uh, I hope that, you know, gave some just understanding and, and getting you to kind of look and give, you know, do your research. I'm not here to give everything for you. Like I said, the purpose of this episode is get you to um, of this uh, Thrive Abundantly TV is just to push you to just, just think in a bigger realm you know, to think in abundance, to get you to thrive, to get you to the point to go, hmm, and really start digging and thinking into your business, because this is what I had to do and really start doing research to learn these things. So that's just my personal, um, you know, experience and things like that. I found that, you know, really putting the money because I've been at points, you know, building businesses from pennies, you know what I'm saying, and, and scraping from nothing, using my OPM all the time, you know what I mean? So it's really important to you know, really understand what's what's super important, putting yourself in a place where, um, you know, putting yourself in a place where you're creating income producing activities. What's going to get you to the point of getting things out the door? That's exactly why when I gave my 10 power moves, I think the sixth power move was offer high ticket items. When you're offering little cheap stuff, sometimes it doesn't always pay you. So when you're offering high ticket offers, and things like that. Like I said, I have exclusive, exclusive coaching where people can get things like this. So what I share, um, you know, on videos and stuff and then really precise to your business per se, but where people get these particular things on one-on-one, -on -one, you can say like really where they are in their business. So um, when you put yourself at a place where you can really get coaching, you know, and really someone to really hold in with you with your business and honing into your message is really important to do that. And then you can offer a high ticket offer. Then that way, you know, the cost and things, because like when you're putting your brand and new brands out there, you know, you're testing it out. You have to be comfortable. Scared money don't make money. You have to be comfortable with a place of putting stuff out there. That's why sometimes getting loans, things like that are necessary, but it really depends on your business. I personally don't recommend getting loans and things like that for something for someone who's in network marketing because you got a platform that was already done and built. Just follow the system and how they coach you and what to do. Now, using um, programs that they provide for your marketing, things like that, yes, use it. But as far as doing your own thing and stuff like that, sometimes, you know, you just want to follow, don't try to reinvent the wheel, you know, follow the system. Okay, so that caps our time. Um, I'm going to share a little bit more tomorrow about 
um, like I said, for LLC and S Corp. So a little bit of notes and things that I've discovered that have been helpful. And if you have any questions, definitely, you know, inbox me, send me an email um, at Lauren, Lauren at thrivewithlc.com. Um, and then also, too, for those who are business owners, as I say, and you don't have a good place to have for your record keeping, um, there's one, and I'll type it in the chat that I personally use that I love. It's easy. I could put it on the go on my phone. And it's just a website, but you can create it as like a, um, you know, like a, a, a app on your phone. And it, I, I love it. It's easy. Um, it's the best thing that I've ever used. I put the link in the chat. I made it just a short link for it. So that way it's easy um, for you to do. If you just go to bit.ly forward slash track my biz with a Z, um, there's a, um, it's called the cash flow manager. And that's what I use. It's very helpful. Um, I'm easy, able to pull it up. Things that I've recorded, I can put in and, and check. I don't have to carry about around uh, big old racks of, you know, um, piles and piles of uh, receipts or anything like that. So um, it's, the link is in the comments or you know, just inbox me directly if you want the private link per se. And um, that's what's, what I've been using for the last maybe about year and a half or so. Um, it's changed the game for my business. It's so much easier. The CPA loves it. So when she gets my um, stuff in my tax lady, when I get my stuff, they can just go right in there and, and see it. It's so much easier. You don't have to stop doing stuff the old school way. The only way you're gonna be able to brand and thrive and get things out there is you got to keep up. I don't like to say to keep up with the Joneses because the Joneses is where you're going broke, keeping up with someone else who's broke. But you got to keep up with the times that everything is digital. You know, you want You got to be adjustable. You got to be in a place where you're able to change and work around, you know, things that are out there and just get stuff to be more simplistic. Simplicity. OK, you know, the easier things are the way you set it up. It might not be easy starting out to learn. I wasn't the most savvy tech person or whatever. But once I learned it, how to do it, it was just super easy and it becomes a habit and it just makes life so much easier. I don't have to go the old two way. My taxes is done quick and easy like this. And God forbid, if we ever get audit, things are just in place. You know what I'm saying? Easy, done. You could take the picture of your receipt and it's done. So that's um, pretty much it. Like I said, tune in tomorrow at 1230. This week is all about money and business. I'm going to share a lot more with helping you getting in the place of how you should put up and set up your, your business. Um, by all means, I, um, if you are in need, I have them for like one or two, one more coaching pro, um, coaching clients or whatever um, to fill out, fill up for the uh, month. I'm very particular about who I take on to coach because I really want to make sure that I can be there to assist and help you in your business and, you know, definitely set up a platform where we're putting in for success. And I'm very particular about that. So, you know, if you need help with your business, you're just kind of scattered around and you need someone to be like, you know, over the shoulder in your business with a lot of things. I'm telling you guys, it's been a game changer for me with my business. I always said, if Oprah got a coach, I need a coach. You know, if you want to level up, you got to get someone who's on the next level from you. And like I said, once you're still, what was once your ceiling is now your floor and then you're on the next level. So I love you guys. I hope this was very helpful. Please share this with other entrepreneurs. Tune in tomorrow at 1230 for Thrive Abundantly TV. I'm going to share a lot more, a little bit more about the LLC and S Corps, um, getting a good understanding with that. And um, like I said, we have a special guest coming on on Thursday. It will be at a different time. So I'll keep you guys posted and those who are on my email list. Um, you know, you'll get that information and, you know, if you want to be on my email list, if you just go to bit.ly forward slash thrive email, um, that's how you'll be able to get on my list. Or you go to my, um, my, my business page on Facebook. If you just go to CEO LC thrive on Facebook, you'll see where you can sign up and, you know, sign up to my email list. So that way you're kept, you're kept up with everything that's going on here on thrive button on TV. I give a lot of free information. On free resources and things like that. So I love you guys. Hope this was helpful. Please share. I love the hearts and the likes of anything I can share. And I hope this made you go, hmm, and really, really get you to think about your business because it's really important. You've got to start taking your business serious and always look for ways to get to the next level. All right, y'all. See y'all tomorrow at 1230.